Why stop with doing one time series at a time when you can model multiple time series all together at once? I mean, who wouldn't want to do that, right? Don't answer that. Instead, just enjoy asking, what is the vector autoregressive model? First things first, when talking about multivariate anything, we don't mean multiple predictor variables. I see people all the time that think when someone says multivariate regression, they mean multiple regression. Not true. I know it sounds the same, but the difference is very important. Multivariate regression, and by proxy, multivariate time series, refers to modeling multiple target variables at the same time. Um, basically, imagine you had a situation like this. You have many things you're trying to forecast. These things are probably related, so you want to forecast them simultaneously. So how do we handle this in time series as one model? First, we have to remember what AR and MA models are. If you forgot, you can check out the videos by clicking on the information circle in the upper right-hand corner. Of course, if you don't want to miss these videos in the future, you can click subscribe in the lower right-hand corner. Marketing at its finest. Remember that AR models forecast a series based solely on the past values of the series, called lags. MA models, on the other hand, forecast a series on past values of the errors in the series, called error lags. Previously, we talked about combining these models together. This makes model building so nice. Instead of having really large AR models or really large MA models, we can combine them together into ARMA models that typically have fewer terms, but model just as well. So what does this have to do with multiple target variables? The same concepts apply but with just more than one target variable. Let's go really basic on this first example. Let's imagine we have two target variables and an AR1 model. The two target variables means we are predicting two Y variables at the same time through this one model. When I mean an AR1 model, I mean that we have one lag of these two target variables. All of this is written in vector form, like you see here on the slide. We have a vector of y variables on the left, a vector of intercepts, a matrix of parameters in front of a vector of lags of the y variables, and a vector of error terms. Same model as an AR1, but with two variables. These are called vector autoregressive, or VAR, models. In case you don't like seeing things in matrix form, <laughs> and really who does, we can expand those vectors and matrices into two equations, one for each of the target variables. But let's look at that first equation a little more closely. Not only does the first target variable y1 have its own first lag, which isn't surprising, it is an AR1 model, but it also has the other target variables first lag. What? Remember, we said these variables are probably related. That is why when we model them together, we are essentially intermixing their lags. The same thing is also happening with our second target variable, Y2's equation. Of course, this can be easily expanded. Let's imagine we have K target variables now. Let's also imagine that instead of just an AR1 model, we also have an MA1 term in here as well. This would make this the vector ARMA or VARMA11 model. As you can see, they get a little unwieldy to write, so we typically just write them like you see at the bottom. We use bolded letters to denote a vector or matrix instead of a single variable. We can get even crazier and expand this to the Varma PQ model that has matrices and vectors, well, everywhere. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did we say we were talking about the vector AR model and not the vector ARMA model? Well, actually, even though when we typically model one target variable, ARMA models are more common than AR models. In practice, vector AR models are more common than vector ARMA models. But why? VAR models have more parameters that typically need to be estimated to be as predictive as their corresponding smaller VARMA models. However, the biggest difference is in the computation. VAR models use simple maximum likelihood estimation and least squares to estimate all those alphas. VARMA models, on the other hand, are harder to computationally estimate. They use iterative maximum likelihood estimation, which needs partial derivatives. That should hopefully bring back some dark memories of calculus. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have five target variables. For a good model, say a VAR12 model, it would need to estimate 320 parameters. For a good VARMA model, say a VARMA11, it would only need to estimate 70 parameters. However, those 70 parameters would actually need 4,900 partial derivative calculations to pull off. No thanks, VAR will do just fine for me. 
you can keep those Varma models. So what is the vector autoregressive model? That is the vector autoregressive model in under five minutes.